of the Orient, Ceylon, Teardrop of India. Whatever you call Sri Lanka, one thing is true about it. This beautiful country has unique traditions you won't see anywhere else in the world. Coconut smashing, full moon celebrations, and hotels without beds. These are just a drop in the bucket. Let's count down from number 14, celebrating the full moon. Every single full moon, or poya, is officially a public holiday, which makes Sri Lanka the number one country in the world when it comes to frequency of holidays. Each of these monthly poyas has its own name, and the dates obviously change every year. This tradition is a way to commemorate important events in Buddhism. For example, the January poya is celebrated to remember the first of Buddha's three visits to Sri Lanka, and the one in May celebrates his birthday, enlightenment, and achievement of nirvana. Number 13. Shaking their head as a sign of agreement. If you ask someone in Sri Lanka if the weather's going to be good today, and they start shaking their head, it doesn't mean a thunderstorm is on its way. It's quite the opposite. It means, yeah, it'll be a nice day. In the context of this example, of course. In fact, Sri Lankans don't just shake their head but waggle it by making a figure eight in the air. A short waggle is also a way of saying hey to a passerby, and a more energetic one means yes. It's not easy to get the movement down just right, so you better practice. 12. One word for many emotions. The Sri Lankan AO is a particular slang word. It's been officially acknowledged by the Oxford Dictionary, but putting a definition to it isn't quite as easy as you'd think. If you ask 10 locals what it means, you'll most likely get 10 or more different answers. AO is super versatile and can express anything from joy to sorrow, pity to disgust, and awe to anger. So whenever you're talking to a Sri Lankan, Throw an occasional AO and they'll be impressed. Number 11. Beethoven means breakfast time. If you go to Sri Lanka, you'll hear Beethoven's fur elise in the streets every morning. Bread trucks or tuk toks have chosen it as their anthem for some reason. In any case, when locals hear the tune, they know the bakery on wheels is making its way through the neighborhood. Kind of like turkey in the straw in the US for the neighborhood ice cream truck. Number 10. The birthplace of cinnamon. Now, it might have been made popular by the ancient Egyptians, but the first cinnamon in the world comes from the central hills of Sri Lanka. The island is still the number one cinnamon exporter in the world, and there are eight types of it in the country. So next time you spice up your meals or coffee with some cinnamon, don't forget to thank the Sri Lankans. Number 9. March Madness. Cricket is more than just a sport in Sri Lanka, it's a way of life. And of course, a favorite pastime for millions, from school kids to their grandparents. While everyone in the States is going crazy for basketball, March Madness in Sri Lanka is the time of the big match. Different schools compete to become the big cricket champion, and the whole country watches. But it's not just about the competition. The spirit is just so contagiously inspiring. If you choose March for a visit, you'll hear chanting, see parades, and flags everywhere. And if you aren't that much into cricket, I'm sure you'll still enjoy the stage performances, jazz evening, and shopping festivals that are organized along with the tournament. 8. Eating out only for special occasions. If you're used to grabbing some lunch with your coworkers or meeting up with friends at a restaurant on a typical Friday, then I assume you're not in Sri Lanka. There. Eating out is reserved for special occasions, like birthdays, anniversaries, or some other important milestone. It's not because they don't have any restaurants. There are plenty of those, and the food is amazing. It's just that Sri Lankan moms see cooking as their privilege and will wake up at 5 a.m. to make lunch to go for every family member. Number 7. Roomless Hotels Imagine this, you're traveling around Sri Lanka, and after a happily exhausting day of sightseeing, you walk into a hotel and request a room only to get a smile and a menu instead. It's not that the receptionist doesn't like or understand you, it's because not every hotel in Sri Lanka is a place you can sleep at. Quite a lot of restaurants, cafes, and bars are called hotels. 
No one knows the exact reason for that, but there is one theory. Some time ago, hotels were the best place to get delicious and beautifully served food, so they became associated with eating out. Therefore, before you request a room, make sure the hotel you're at even offers sleeping accommodations. 6. Serious Tea Business If you're an avid tea drinker, chances are you're sipping on some warm Sri Lankan greetings every day. The island country is fourth on the list of top tea exporting countries, making $721 million in 2018 alone. So yeah, tea hits Sri Lanka's biggest export, and the industry employs over a million people. The first tea was brought from China to Sri Lanka by the British in 1824. And back then, the island was called Ceylon, which basically became synonymous for tea. Locals have it first thing in the morning and at around 4 p.m. So at least two cups a day and there's no upper limit. 5. Powered by water Hydropower used to make up over 50% of all the power used in Sri Lanka. And even though it's at around 20% now, it's still impressive. This hydro-powered electricity is possible thanks to waterfalls, rivers, and abundant rains in the country. 4. The largest Christmas tree in the world You'd expect some wintry place like Finland to hold this record, but the tallest Christmas tree in the world was registered by Guinness World Records in Sri Lanka in 2017. It stood 236 feet tall and was made from metal and wood with 600,000 LED bulbs that lit it up at night. The tree that looked more like a spaceship to many cost the country around $80,000. 3. Smashing coconuts No, not pumpkins, coconuts! Any Sri Lankan can break a coconut, and it's as easy to them as tying their shoes. Smashing or dashing a coconut, however, has deep symbolism and can help you in different situations if you believe in it. They can be positive situations, like if you want your favorite team to win, or negative ones, like a way to punish an enemy. There's even a special dashing ritual for good luck and for bad luck. The main thing is not to mix the two up. Number 2. The first country with a female prime minister In July 1960, Sirimavo Bandaraki became the first female head of government in the world. She was re-elected twice and remained prime minister until she resigned in 2000 for health reasons. Number 1. Who to thank for the word serendipity? Sri Lanka was once known as serendip to the Arabs and Persians. Back in 1754, English writer Horace Walpole came across this word in the title of a Persian fairy tale, The Three Princes of Serendip, and loved it. The princes in that story were able to make lucky guesses and unexpected but important discoveries. The writer added an ending to the word and has been widely used in the English language ever since. Hey, would you like to visit Sri Lanka? Or maybe you've already been there? Let me know down in the comments! If you learned something new today, then give this video a like, share it with a friend, and here are some more cool videos to check out from the Bright Side of Life.